Hey, what's going on? It's Kevin Deers. Thank you so much for checking out Everflowing Stream, my YouTube channel, where I get to talk with all kinds of musicians and artists about the art that they make and touring and the craziness that is the last couple years. I'm ch chatting with Emma Boster from a band called Dying Wish. Really cool Portland melodic metalcore band. Uh, they just got off tour with Acacia Strain. They're going to be heading out in 2022 with a, with a band called Code Orange. I'm sure you know who they are. I uh, wanted to get into the interview shortly, but before I do, I just wanted to mention uh i i very thankful for anyone that subscribes rates reviews my channel uh if you could do that it would be very very awesome uh subscribe and and uh one th when you do that you'll get the notifications of when i post a new interviews but without any further ado here's my interview with emma from dying wish on ever flowing stream hey what's going on back here with uh emma boster and uh we talked last uh a long time ago in a in a sense it, it wasn't that long ago but things were very different for your band for you uh you know that was before you released this huge album your debut lp uh you guys toured with like a bunch of tours we're gonna go over like your favorite moments of those tours and stuff but my my question uh that i ended the last interview with was pick a scar on your body and tell us the story of how you got it now in that interview you mentioned that you have a lot of them so you said next time we chat, you'll give me info on another one and you'll show show off that scar. So the first one you said was like on the forehead and you got it at a museum. Correct. So yeah, let's hear I, about I, another one. OK, Um. interesting. Well, I have two identical um, scars on my knees from two totally different accidents. Um, one was from riding a bike and one was from playing basketball. Um, which just proves how clumsy I am and how I am not meant to be athletic in mm -hmm. any way, shape or form. Um, I cut the tip of my pinky finger off once and they super glued it back on. Um, Jesus. yeah. So I, I don't know if you probably can't tell, but, uh, yeah. So that is funny. Um, oh my gosh. I have one on my knee that's kind of fresh, um, because, my friend Caroline had picked me up and mm -hmm. accidentally dropped me. And so I named it after them. So I have a scar named Caroline on my okay. knee if they're if they're listening. Hello, Caroline. But yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks for for, for <clears throat> humoring that question. So you, it's funny you mentioned basketball because if you follow Emma on Twitter, uh, half of it's hardcore. And, and, you know, like stuff, band promotion and, and whatever. And then the other half is you uh, tweeting about basketball. So were you were you a baller or is this a recent thing? Were you did you grow up a fan of basketball and did you play basketball? I really did. I grew up a fan of basketball. Um, awesome. I grew up a, a Los Angeles Lakers fan, actually, which um, I'm somewhat ashamed to say now. But, you know, during the Kobe and Shaq era, that was what really got me to love the sport. Yeah. Um, and then I played when I was younger, but I wasn't very good. Um, and actually, so after the pandemic had started and I lost a lot of my hobbies due yeah. to live music not being available, um, watching basketball was pretty much all that I did. Yeah. So um, my love for basketball has really been rekindled in the last couple of years, but... Awesome. Right on. I just bought NBA 2K22, so I'm going to go play that on the on the Switch when we're done here. So Nice. Awesome. I I I am a fan of yeah, I think my love of basketball like stopped in the 90s, so I, you know, if it's I I could I could send you down a rabbit hole of like, you know, uh Tony Kukoc and Dennis Rodman facts, but aside from that, I just but my I, I wanted to mention that um so you you're in Portland. My um my great uncle, he had a barber shop, and back in the early '90s, he used to cut all the Portland Trailblazers hair, like Clyde Drexler and all those wow. guys. So, pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Clyde Drexler is like that's a top three. Absolutely. Player. So that's awesome. so name drop my great uncle. <laughs> uh, okay, so the last month for you uh, has probably gone been very strange. So you go from the highest highs of touring with the Acacia Strain, you know, out on this huge tour, and then. You come back and you're quarantined because you get COVID on Christmas. So you go from the highest high of going out on tour and like killing it. And then what was that like? You know, that the duality of those two things. What was that like for you? 
Right. Well, I mean, the ending of the tour was pretty sad, you know, because yeah. we didn't get to say goodbye properly and whatever. Um, and then we had like a 55 hour drive home. So where were you at? That was we were in Worcester, Damn. Massachusetts. So we did one coast to the other. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like um, it's not it's not fortunate in any way, shape or form that I did get COVID. But um, I definitely did enjoy my isolation period. And I feel like if there was any time for me to do it, it would have been after touring almost nonstop for three months sure. because I really needed you the decompress. space. decompress. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. But then there's, you know, Christmas when you, you know, you spend Christmas alone. So what was your quarantine Christmas meal? Oh, what did I eat for Christmas? Probably, um, I, my mom got me a Grubhub gift card for okay. DoorDash, one of those. Um, so I ordered Thai food like okay. every other day. Um, so oh. I probably ate Thai food, but, um, I don't necessarily remember. I ate a lot of the same thing almost every day. So it was probably that. All right. Well, you're back to full strength. You're back at it. And, and, um, I, I was curious about, um, how things have changed for you since the last time we've talked. So, I mean, obvious, I mean, there's the things I mentioned already, you guys toured a bunch, you know, but like the, the album how, in your per personally, uh, how, how much are things different than the last time we talked? So different. I mean, um, the last time we talked, we were really just ramping up and had been working on promotion. Yeah. You couldn't even give me album. a date uh, for yeah. when the album was out. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, um, can you give me a date? You're like, uh, it's coming up shortly. It'll be up by the end of the year. So I was like, all right, all right. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Oh, then everything has changed. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, we could not I, I never really expected um, it to do as well as it did. I mean, I, you know, I guess I just didn't really know what to expect, yeah. expect because we had never released an LP. But um, it just really feels like um, we had uh, hoped to really elevate into like a new level of band with the release of the LP and doing touring full time um, for the last quarter of the year. And it truly did happen that way. Oh, yeah. So it feels like a totally different experience um, to have under my belt at this point. I mean, you guys are all, all over Revolver, Sirius XM, Liquid Metal. You're all over the place. You're, you're getting features. And by the way, I, I need to mention, I kind of just jumped right into it, but the album is called Fragments of a Bitter Memory. It's out now on Sharp Tone Records. You could get it on CD, on vinyl. Personally, I got it on CD so I could play it in my car. I know I'm one of those weirdos that, you know, likes actually still having CDs. But, you know, there are a couple of us out there. Um, but so before we um, the last time we chatted, uh, you mentioned Sharp Tone Records. I wasn't familiar with Sharp Tone, but uh, I'm very familiar with Nuclear Blast. Is is Sharp Tone a subsidiary of Nuclear Blast? Correct. Yes, it okay. is. OK, that's cool yeah. that you guys are like one of the first big bands to really, you know, start uh, this Sharp Tone uh, kind of project. What was the do you know what the idea behind Sharp Tone was as kind of like a side sister label of Nuclear Blast? Um, just to kind of, well, um, Sean, who, uh, founded Sharp Tone, he mm -hmm. used to do Sumerian. Oh, um, okay. and yeah, so he was working for a lot of the bands that we are influenced by in yep. the mid two thousands, um, and put out a lot of really great releases. And so his whole idea was to kind of like bring back that metalcore. It's a very mm -hmm. metalcore, um, record label. Yeah. Um, so like bleeding through is is on sharp tone and um people you know uh i feel like we're a little bit of a dark horse on the on the label um but yeah it's it's just metalcore that's cool well i mean you know it, to have the machine of nuclear blast and then sharp tone teamed up like that that's a, a very not uh, have you been able to visit their their um office i i went down to their um a couple of years ago my friend roy does their uh he handles all of the um, merchandising for in-store re uh, re retailers. Uh, so he gave me a tour and it's like a really, really cool office down there in Culver City. Have you been there oh, yet? Wow. No, I have not. Um, 
would absolutely love to. Um, and I'm sure Sharp Tones headquarters are also, um, they just relocated to Nashville if I'm Oh, mistaken. never mind then. So, um, yeah, but I mean, either way, um, I would, would love to um, have that experience of, you know, feeling like you're in, in the space of the label, you know? Right. You're like, this is actually a thing. I knew it was a real, th okay. So you, okay. So we're talking about, you mentioned the th kind of a, kind of a, an homage to like the metal core stuff. So my, my question to you, if we were going back, you know, 15, 20, uh, let's say 15 years, would dying wish be an Ozfest band or a warp tour band? If you had to pick <clears> one. <throat> uh, that's a crazy question. I want to say both because I feel like part of our goal as a band is to be able to fit diversely on so many different bills. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I would love to do a warp tour personally. Yeah. Um, Ozfest is like, you know, I feel like that would be Dying Wish in five years from now. Sure. Dying Wish now would be warp tour for sure. And I mean, it would be kind of fitting because the last time we chatted, you said that your first band T-shirts you ever got were from Warped Tour with your mom. Correct. Yeah. So, there you go. And then you could sell, you know, T-shirts to to a, the next Emma, you know. So. Uh, okay. So, what were some of your highlights of the year? Because you guys got to play, you know, uh, Furnace Fest. You guys got to tour with Acacia Strain, Motionless and White. Am I missing anything? Were there any tours that I'm missing out on? Acacia Strain, Motionless and White. Was there anything else? Um, we did our two headliners in um, the Northwest, so Tacoma okay. and Portland. With Dead Heat, that's right. Correct. Awesome. So what what were some of the highlights? What were some of your favorite places you visited and, and whatnot? Um, well, the last show that we played was in Worcester, um, and we played the small room upstairs at the Palladium, but um, seeing the room downstairs at the Palladium and just looking at this awesome room where, you know, Killswitch filmed their DVD yeah. um, and like just all of you, you could feel the history in the building and it just like was um, really inspiring as far as like what this band wants to achieve and hopefully I'm sure one day, you know, if we keep working the way that we are, we will play mm -hmm. there. Um, Another huge memory is like, honestly, our hometown show in Portland, like just blew our expectations out of the water. Um, That's good because sometimes when a band goes out, they come back and, you know, people won't really care. You know, my friend, I won't say their band, but he'll go out on tour and th he loves it. And then he comes back and he says, dude, they, we get no hometown love. So that's awesome that, you know, you guys got a great reaction in Portland. Yeah, it was very heartwarming. Um, one last thing, too. We played Texas for the first time. We had never played Texas before. Um, yeah. And those San Antonio was awesome. Um, With Kuba Khan? So, yes. That must have been pretty awesome, seeing them in Texas. Right. It was phenomenal. Shout out. Cool. Well, who, who did you guys bro down with the most? Like, who, who did you make really good friends with? Um, probably Kubicon, um, cool. or the Acacia Strain and Orthodox, honestly, like that whole tour, like, um, every day, just like feeling so, uh, loved and, you know, such a, like a friendship vibe, you know, yeah. it, it, uh, it was really, really awesome. We definitely made some lifelong friendships with those people. And on the Acacia Strain tour, they were doing specific albums. And so um, I saw a clip of you getting to do the Jamie Jost apart during Beast, which is huge. You're doing the Jost apart. So we got Emma Jost to here, dude. That's, <laughs> maybe that, that's kind of weird to say, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. That's badass. I, I love it. Like my last name is Boster. So you could say Basta. Yeah, there you, you go. Know. Are you going to get you your own pasta? Oh my goodness! Some and a Josh podcast, Penny Pasta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Boster podcast. Oh my god! I'm just, I whatever. I'm I'm gonna stop before <laughs> I get too weird here. So okay. So how was Furnace Fest? That looked really fun, and and that was during a time where, you know, um, you know, I, I that was like right as shows for me. Like we're starting to come back, and I, I kind of had FOMO. I had a couple friends go down there, and I was like watching their clips, you know, of all these different shows, and I was like, man. I wish I was there. I, I definitely had FOMO that weekend. What was the was Furnace Fest like for you? Crazy. It was our first festival that we've ever played that wasn't like a hardcore fest, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so biggest stage we've ever played on, biggest crowd we've ever played in front of, um, earliest load in we've ever done. So it was definitely like a, a, a new experience, but mm -hmm. we had a blast and um, being able to see uh, bands like Comeback Kid play to like 2000 people and like Turnstile and Motionless played to a huge crowd and Kill Switch and yeah. Knocked Loose. It was just like, you know, it was a little overwhelming. Um, I feel like Fest can feel that way for me sometimes, sure. but um, yeah, it's, it's hard to take it all in, but really just like a, a really eye-opening experience. Who had the set of the weekend in your opinion? Comeback Kid. Comeback Kid, nice. Yes, yeah, it was awesome. That's that's our crowd. That's the comeback kid crowd for sure, right there. Mm -hmm. um, you so you're you're when you're on tour with Motionless and White. That's very I would imagine very different than like the Acacia Strain because Motionless and White is like a big production. That's like a rock and roll tour. Was that like uh, a whole different experience for you to be a part of like a huge rock and roll production? Yes. Um, again, inspiring uh, to watch that band. Uh, just have so many people singing their lyrics back at them, mm -hmm. you know, just like, just uh, Chris Motionless, the singer, he would just drop the mic sometimes and just let the crowd sing. And like that, I have chills just thinking about it. That was awesome. But yeah, the big production, um, the last night they did like confetti and cryo. Um, cool. So that, that was- What's cryo? So cryo is like, it's basically like haze that shoots up. Oh, um, cool. You take like uh, hydrogen tanks and like hook it up and it just like shoots fog up into the air. Yeah. Kind of like pyro, but not with fire. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. So um, I, my, my, I, I already kind of mentioned that you guys were getting so much press for this album, you know, with, with, uh, you know, revolver and, and was there anything that kind of like, uh, you kind of had to pinch yourself. Was there any moment when you, when you got like a notification, you know, and you're like, Oh my God, we're, we made like gotten like an article in this press or something like that. Was there any, any moments like that? And specifically, which was it? Right. Well, I mean, revolver has just been writing us or writing for us uh, for such a long time. Yeah. Uh, so like, I feel like we do owe a lot of our success to them um, for, you know, covering us so much. Definitely um, but... championing you guys a, a lot. Yeah. You know? Right. But we've been, I have the copy right here. We've been um, printed in Revolver twice now in the last year. So With the turnstile cover, that's cool. I had to get this when I saw it at Barnes and Noble. Awesome. Um, the other one is Not Fest. I did like yeah. a Not Fest interview on their Twitch stream and mm -hmm. they have published a couple articles about us. Um, so that's, that's really cool too. So do you think that Corey Taylor is her dying wish? Well, we are going on tour with Vended, which his, is his son's band. Yes. So uh, I wonder if he'll come to a show. There you go. Maybe you could do a part on Spit It Out or, you know, maybe you could cover Wait and Bleed and he could jump up. Wow. That would be crazy. <laughs> I, I, I was curious about um, the time that you got press, but they used the photo of Heist from high school. So <sighs> what? <laughs> Where did they get that? First off, how did they find that? Where did they get that? And what was your reaction? When you... Okay, so like, long story short, this this thing they 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 like tweet about you or what, what was even the the news story? Was it? It was some like really small uh, Facebook press outlet that yeah. did like our top twenty female vocalists of twenty twenty one, which is like I already have a problem with that. Sure. Um in a way. I mean, you know, I think it's good to recognize, but you know, like let's you know, we're not competing against each other and, you know. Anyways, uh so they used photos and they were like, here's our top twenty. And Courtney LaPlante had a wonderful press photo and Connie from Sea Space Cowboy had a super cute press photo. And they used my senior photo that honestly i didn't even use i had mine re retaken um but somehow uh the person who took the photo put that on a blog like 10 years ago and this person googled my name and scrolled through uh i think we counted it was like 18 pictures that they scrolled through of me to find that one and they they used my high school photo um i honestly just thought it was pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really offended by it at all. I just thought it was, I thought it was uh, humor. 
So, okay. So I, I, I'm, you know, not trying to, 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 you know, kind of poke at it, but I'm curious about, so like about, you know, 15, no, maybe 12, even to like 10 or probably even five years ago, I would see flyers for like, you know, so-and-so presents the sexiest women in rock tour, you know, and like the women in rock tour and it would be like, you know, so-and-so band, you can imagine what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to name any bands, but you know what I'm talking about. Very Mm -hmm. European, you know, rock bands. So, right. Right. But uh, obviously things have progressed and things have changed and things have uh, moved in a strong direction, but there are still people who will, you know, kind of classify it as like female fronted rock and roll, like best female fronted bands and stuff. So, you know, what, uh, I don't want to speak for you. What what is uh, your issue with that? I can imagine. I just don't want to speak for you. Um, so a lot of the conversation um, just needs to be had. Um, but a lot of times it's brought up like, oh, Dying Wish should go on tour with Ginger and Sea Space Cowboy and Spirit Box. And it's like, while yes, like that would be a crazy tour, like a bunch of big bands sonically it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and the only reason why you are putting us all together is because of the faces of the band all having you know our uh, gender expression similarly and um it just feels like it's um furthering a marginalization where you know there's metal and then there's girl metal and uh, it doesn't feel like Um, we are taken seriously. It feels like we have a much higher standard that we have to um, live up to. Um, And I mean, this is, again, like people will say it and uh, I don't think that it's worth, uh, you know, um, being angry over, but I just think that we need to continue to have the conversation and educate people as why it could be harmful for um, artists like myself that make heavy music um, to be categorized just not by our talent or the kind of music that we make, but just by our gender. Well, I'll do my part in making it sound ridiculous when I call out bands and I'm going to call them male fronted metal bands. And just we'll see how ridiculous it sounds when I do that on the radio show. I'll say that was Dying Fetus, a male fronted death metal band. (laughs) And we'll just see how, you know, how long how long it takes for people to get what I'm I'm pointing at. So, um, You sing a lot on the record. Not okay, maybe not a ton, but there are points where you sing. You have a great voice. Um, Thank you. When did you discover that you could sing like that? Have you always been able um, to sing? I've always sang. Um, okay. Ever since I was old enough to talk and walk, I was walking around the house singing awesome. and dancing. Yeah. Um, always, when I was younger, it was my dream to be on American Idol. Um, and I almost did go audition one time, but I'm really glad I didn't because uh, I don't think it would have been a worthy experience. But um, I think the outtake I, videos would be pretty cool, though. Oh, my God. Could you imagine how funny they would be now? Uh, um, but, yeah, I did choir all go, like growing up and everything, and I always wanted to be in a band. Um, I just like never uh, knew if it would be singing or screaming, and now I get to do both, which is really cool. That is awesome. Um, were you... Uh, were you nervous at all to be able to do that live? Like the screaming and the singing? I've seen bands, and again, I'm not going to say, but I've seen bands where they scream amazing and then they're about to hit, try to hit that singing and it's, it's like, woof. But where, right. are you nervous about when you when you do it live? Um, no. Um, I, it definitely got, it took, a, it took a minute for me to get a hang of it. I mean, singing has always come pretty naturally, but um, screaming, I definitely have, um, I did battle the longevity um, of my voice for the first tour we did. And this last tour, I feel like I was really able to nail it down. Cool. Um, but uh, I just think it's just practice and it, it comes pretty easily. It's like, um, there's, different kinds of voices that you use when you sing like a chest voice and a head voice and falsetto and all that. So it's somewhat similar. Like if you practice switching from all of those different techniques, it's pretty similar to switching from singing to screaming as well. Who do you picture in your head when you scream? Like, who do you want to sound like? That's interesting. Um, I mean, 
I've never really pictured anyone um, but myself, I guess. I guess if there were going to be anyone, it would be Howard yeah. um, from Kill Switch. I just, yeah. um, I recently have been playing around with like the higher pitch cool. um, and feel really, really comfortable there. And so, um, I don't know. He's just is such a powerhouse. And so yeah. I just like picture that kind of strength and, and go from there. Have you listened at all to his project with Jared Dines? It's pretty cool. I have not. Yeah, he did a EP. He's doing music with that YouTuber Jared Dines. It sounds like old school Kill Switch. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Isn't Jared Dines from the Northwest? Yeah, he's from Tacoma. That's that's right. That's right. Yes. I will have to check it out. Absolutely. So right on. So what's next for Dying Wish 2022? You guys have a a, a, play, a tour planned or? We do. Um, we're going on tour with Code Orange and Loathe and Ben Dead. That's, right. that's in huge. April. It's huge. I'm so excited to go on tour with Code Orange. Um, I mean, I Am King uh, is high up there for me for uh, one of my favorite uh, metal releases in the last 10 years. So um, that's really cool. And um, we have more planned that, you know, um, we're, we'll see uh, yeah. as far as, you know, COVID and everything goes. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we have more, more plans for um, the summer. And then we're also supposed to um, do Europe in October yeah. with uh, Lionheart and Terror. Um, but again, we'll see COVID permitting. So, yeah, it's gotta be one of those, like, you know, hope we'll, we'll, we'll plan it. We'll see it. And then we'll just cross your fingers. Right. And just, it's all you can do. Yeah. So my last question for you, you've, you've, you've been on tour, you experienced a ton of different States. I'm sure you've met a lot of cool people, met, been in a lot of really cool communities, seen some really awesome places. If you had to tomorrow to move to a different state in the United States, what state would you move to? Tennessee. I would move to Nashville. Cool. What was it about yeah. Nashville? It's just, um, I lived with someone who just moved to Nashville recently and yeah. they love it. And every time I go, it does remind me of home. Yeah. Um, in some ways it's got like a fun, quirky, artsy vibe, kind of like Portland does. Um, and the music, um, and the opportunities. And, um, I just feel like it's somewhere I would really fit in and like to live so and it's sharp Maybe town right happen. there exactly exactly yeah. right on mm -hmm. right on well any final words before we let you go um no i mean thank you so much for having me on and You're for welcome. talking about the record and um it's it's been really like slow for me the last couple weeks so it's nice to you know do some dying wish related things and have a reminder of what i love to do so much so right on well good to see you and Hopefully I'll be able to catch Dying Wish when you guys come through with Code Orange. You guys are going to be playing Absolutely. at the Crocodile. Crocodile, never been there. Iconic venue. And they they just got a new location, so it's it's beautiful. Right. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. I'll see you there, Emma. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Bye.